Okay, so you've heard all about no-tilling. So have I. I've experimented with it for a few years. I love Dr. Grant Woods to death. He's a good guy, good Christian man. Uh, educationally, tune in to Growing Deer TV if you had not already because it's got great wildlife management stuff. There's only one tiny drawback. It's a little something called money. I don't have any. It's just sad truth, but that's that. If I did have plenty, I would be getting a no-till drill. That's about $15,000. I would be getting a Goliath crimper. That's about another five. But I don't have that kind of cabbage. So, I have to do what I call faux-till. If you all will roll with me today, I'm going to show you how we faux-till a plot. Now, I've done it before every fall for about the last five years. This is a new one on summer plot, so we'll, you all will learn as I learn. We'll see how it goes with the experiment. But we're no-tilling, but without a drill and without a crimper. Let's solve the first problem. No drill. Dead is dead. So, even though I don't have a drill, I do have a 10-year-old, might be 12, sprayer. So I do have my sprayer. Now, if I spray that with glycosphate, still going to kill it. Didn't crimp it, but it's going to kill it. And that's going to be phase one of fo-tilling. Kill it with a broad-spectrum herbicide like a glycosphate. All right, while this is filling up, uh, what are we doing? We want to kill any existing vegetation that's on the plot so that we got a nice blank palette to start off with. Now, I've learned for our area the cheapest and the most beneficial that I know is going to grow and going to produce for us is crimson clover. And crimson, although it's an annual it reseeds a lot on itself, so I, I can go really low rates in the fall when I plant crimson again. And the abrezzi rye. That abrezzi rye is tough. It makes a good thatch when I roll it down, and it gives us a good mat to plant into with other seeds, especially like summertime. As that breaks down, it will fertilize and feed the soybeans that we're going to put down in this no-till plot. But step one, kill it with glycosphate. If I had a crimper, I'd crimp, but I don't. So we're going to use glycosphate. Now, if I were crimping, I would want this seed in the dough stage where I did that and milk came out of the seed. But, because I'm not crimping, uh, I wait a little later until the seed is almost viable. It may be viable, but I know that when I come back and plant, it will lay down like it's supposed to. If I did it early, this rye would just stand back up. So, wait a little later. If you're faux tilling instead of crimping, wait a little bit later until that seed is actually made. Let me say this about no-tilling. We had about four inches of rain three days ago. If this had been conventionally tilled as opposed to no-till, I couldn't be out in this plot doing anything right now because it would be too wet. I'd sink to the axles. So that's another good point for no-till. All right, giving her a spray. and use it as row markers. I get about 15 feet off this spray boom. If I had to do it by hand, I would, but thank the Lord right now, I got this little mule running so I don't have to do it by hand. All right, we're putting in a Roundup Ready soybean seed. It's a forage soybean. This is Southland wildlife seed. 
Now, I don't know if the patent ran out on Eagle Forage soybeans or what, but normally those are like $150 a bag. Supposedly, same seed as forage soybean, 50 bucks a bag. We were darn glad to get it. All right, we don't have a spreader, but we got one we're pulling behind the mule. We got Mr. James helping. Glad the weather broke. I was kind of afraid about him monkeying. <laughs> now, for those of you who do not know, in the south there's a term. In the north is a heat stroke. In the south, you monkey. So weather has broken. It's not as hot. We're going to broadcast this directly into this rice double. And then I'm going to come back with what I call the mulcher, but it's basically a big cult packer. Hopefully, it goes well. Straight into the standing dead rack. And that's the thing about doing this. If we had the money, I would have a crimper, I would have a no-till drill, but we don't. And I'm all about saving money. So, we're going to see how this comes up with the forage soybeans. But I've done it before, worked then, don't see why it can't work again. Okay, we've sprayed that weed mat and rye. We broadcast Roundup Ready beans right into it. And we went with Roundup Readies because Anything that doesn't get killed now, I can still spray over the top of it because I'm going to have to spray two or three times after this anyway because of weeds and whatnot. But now we're down to the final part of the faux till, which is taking this old coffee packer homemade rig. I call it a mulcher. But I'm going to take that cult packer and run it over the whole thing, which is going to lay most of that. It may not lay down perfect, but food plots really aren't about perfect. I think we get carried away with that because people with a lot of money and a lot of equipment, they look perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just got to get the seeds on the acreage, which is what I'm doing today. So I'm going to roll that over the top. That'll get a little bit of soil contact with those beans and it will lay that weed mat down on top of it. Now, finish this, we'll just be down to getting a good rain, hopefully. All right, there's my rice shovel. Good and dead, the weeds inside there are dead where I sprayed them. Let's let the good time roll. Pretty good lay down. Got it rolled down, seeds in, we've rolled down our rye seed mat. Is it perfect? No. But in the words of my man, the nature boy, you may not like it, whoo, but learn to love it, because it's the cheapest thing going today. Woo! Y'all give us a subscribe and a like. See you next time.